All right, today we're going to do a little experiment. We're going to take our test quad here, and on board I have two flight controllers. One has an MPU 6000 gyro, and the other is an ICM 2689. So as many of you know, the MPU 6000 gyro has been discontinued. The ICM 2689 is the replacement for that gyro. The other flight controller, which I have on top, has two 2602 gyros on it as well. So we have an MPU 6000, we have an ICM 2689 and we have two ICM 2602s. We're going to record logging all of all four at the exact same time with the exact same flight and we're going to see what we get. Okay, before we roll the HD and some of the stuff I've compiled as an overlay on the screen, I want to kind of go through some of the stuff so just so you know what you're looking at. So in a moment, we're gonna run the HD of the flight and I have two things on the screen here, primarily. The top is the slave board. So the top board has two ICM 2602 gyros on it. And you can see the roll trace right here. And this is the PID traces and they're overlapped on top of each other. So this is both roll from gyro one and gyro two. And this is pitch gyro one and gyro two. Now, just with black box and how it works, sometimes the scaling's a little goofy. The numbers are right. It's just how it displays it in Black Box Explorer and then ultimately exports it as well. But you'll see that this trace doesn't look as jiggity jag as you see on the roll trace. Kind of ignore that part. Just focus on the roll trace here. When you do spectrographs and stuff like that, everything works right. And if you export it, it's correct. It's just the display on the actual screen is a little weird sometimes with black box debug traces. The bottom is the master board, and the master board is what's actually flying the quad. Here you have a little bit of a differential. You have a red and a yellow trace. Now, looking at the roll axis, that's what I'm talking about for red and yellow, since that's primarily the one we're going to be looking at. And you can see the ICM 2689 is the red trace, and the MPU 6000 is the yellow trace, which is on front. So again, you have the slave board on top, so I put that data on top, and the master board on the bottom, so I put that data on the bottom. You have the roll and pitch axis, and then you have the different gyros. One thing to look for as it's rolling through and showing the data in the flight is just look at the symmetry of the red and the yellow lines on the slave, the bottom board, between the ICM 2689 and the MPU 6000 versus the asymmetry of some of the data in the ICM 2602 gyros, which it's the same gyro, on, it's on the exact same board, but you can see there's much more variation between the yellow and the red lines at certain spots in the flight for the ICM 2602 gyros versus the MPU 6000, the ICM 2689. Whew, it's a mouthful. Anyways, let's roll the clip. Ooh, it's chilly out today, boys. Let's get this done, though. It's not that chilly, actually, in the grand scheme of things. My fingers are cold. Engines armed. Alright, so both should be logging here at the same time, which I already know they are. It's always fun flying with gloves on. So yeah, you know, it goes to show on this quad that uh, this is a nice uh, Martian two frame with uh, RCX motors, other than the battery being worse for the wear. She flies good. there. That's disgusting. Let's get some moves here. Just really push the gyro's uh, rotational rates here a little bit.
so yeah. Oh, and by the way, the other cool thing we're getting on this is the Express LRS. 200 hertz refresh rates. Oh, 13 volts. Now you should land it. Probably long enough. Oh, nice little bounce. All right, so uh, pretty uneventful. Let's uh, really excited to see what the data shows on this thing. Should be interesting. Let's check it out. Hey, down here. I'm gonna move a screen down to the bottom here just for make sure I don't obscure anything up top. As we're looking at these logs, make sure to keep an eye on our position relative to the RC command traces here. So you can see this one is throttle and I have throttle here as well. Since the RC commands are going from the receiver into both flight controllers simultaneously, it's literally the same wire. That is the way we can kind of line up our position and know where we're at. What we're looking at here is the master board on the left hand side, this one right here, and the slave board on the right hand side and again, this has the ICM 2602 gyros, two of them. And this has the ICM 2689 and the MPU 6000. Again, both those gyros on the same board. Gyro one in this case is the ICM 2689. Gyro two is the MPU 6000 down here. And you can kind of see some differential really we're just looking at the fuzziness of the lines or the jiggy jags in the lines and this one over here with the icm 2602s definitely does have some more vibrations that it's picked up or detected if we then kind of back out to a broader view you can see that's a general trend you can see it really happened over here quite a bit quite a bit more where there's just more vibration that's being picked up in the top board or from the ICM 2602 gyros. So that goes to my next thing is just a control. You know, how do we know that it's just not the top board is just picking up more gyro traces? Well, let me show you what I got here for that. So this is the same quad, same run, two different flight controllers though. Here we have the ICM 2602, two of them on the bottom board and two ICM 2602s on the top board. And you can see we're at the same general location of the log and the amount of jiggy jag in between the two really doesn't look that much different. In fact, if we zoom out, you can see they're relatively the same. And this is the exact same slave flight controller board, the uh, CL Racing F7 with the ICM 2602s on it. Now, of course, I've changed the master board to have the one with the MPU 6000 gyro on it and the uh, ICM 2689. So in looking at that control, what I'm seeing is the, this test setup. I mean, it's literally this quad. It was the same exact quad, same props, uh, same flight controller on the slave board. And then we just switched out the bottom one to have these the board with the different gyros on it, the MPU 6000, the ICM 2689. So that's showing me that it's not really a difference between the two flight control boards. And obviously it's the exact same flight for both of these examples. So our control is kind of pointing us in the right direction that it's not a setup thing. It's just really a difference between the gyro chips themselves or the electronics within the board itself, you know, the isolation. Now, in both flight controller cases, I am powering the bottom flight controller, the master flight controller with VBAT, and then I'm powering the top flight controller with five volts from the bottom flight controller. So the bottom flight controller is taking VBAT down to five volts. I'm taking that five volts up to power the top flight controller. And I did that in the control, and then I also did that in their most recent flights with the MPU 6000 stuff. So what we were just looking at before was the raw trace lines. Let's put that into a spectrograph and see what it looks like when we do it on vibration versus throttle. So we can go ahead and run it in PID toolbox. And here again, we have the top board is the 
CL Racing F7. The bottom board is the JHFM board. So I'll put some text up here in post, but this is the MPU 6000 gyro right here. This is the ICM 2689, and then these are both ICM 2602s. One thing I've noticed here is just this band right here. You can see it doesn't show up on the MPU 6000 at all. It kind of barely shows up on the ICM 2689, and it more distinctly shows up on the ICM 2602s. So that's interesting. So when I noticed that, I wanted to again compare it to the control. And you can see in the control, which all four, you know, the top and the bottom flight controller board had the ICM 2602 gyros on it. This is now the bottom one. So this is the SP Racing F7. This is the same slave one, which is the CL Racing F7. And you can see that that fuzzy area is there uh, on the CL Racing F7. And it does show up as well on the master board, which was, again, ICM 2602 gyros. And it's the uh, SP Racing F7, which here is on the bottom. So one of the things I've really noticed in doing this quite a while and looking at data like this and various things is that it's not so much the high frequency stuff that you have to be concerned about, it's the low frequency stuff, that bass noise level that the gyro picks up. Anywhere from like say 20 hertz up to 100 hertz, that should, you know, the noise level there, because that's kind of the motion zone, we need that to be nice and low. So it picks up the motion, but it doesn't pick up all kinds of vibrations at, at that level, because that really doesn't get filtered at all and it really can amplify and it can't, it's hard to differentiate between what's motion there and what's just vibrations or other issues in the gyro. So let's take a closer look at just a smaller spectrum of just, you know, zero to say 400 hertz and kind of hone in on that. So taking a look at that data, uh, again, here is the JHFM. We have the ICM 2689 up top. If I do a spectrogram of that, you can see I really like to focus my attention right in this area. And if we do the same thing, this is the CL Racing F7 with the ICM2602, and I click on that roll access there. You can see they are close, but you can see this one is a little bit less. Okay, so that is that. Let's look at roll on this one. You can kind of see between the two uh, 2602 gyros, these are pretty much the same between those two, if I click on them. Um, Again, it looked like gyro one was a little bit better than gyro two on this board. If I look at the MPU 6000 between the ICM 2689, you can see the MPU 6000. Again, it's just a little bit less. And same thing if I look at the pitch access. Now there's some stuff I'm getting here that looks a little weird. That's probably just when I bounced on the ground and stuff like that, so I kind of ignore that. But I don't want to trim out because then I have to be very precise in my trimming, so I'm just going to let it go. But if I just compare pitch uh, for the ICM 2689 and then pitch for the MPU 6000, which is this one here, you can see again, the MPU 6000 is just a little bit less. So with all this being said, what is the big takeaway for me at least? What I'm kind of picking up here that the thing you hear of the tried and true MPU 6000, even though it's been discontinued, is there's evidence to back that up. You can see that it's just a little bit better than some of the ICM series gyros. I have to admit, I've also experienced the same thing on some boards that have had both of these gyros. For example, the Luminaire Lux, uh, that has some electrical issues. If I go, it, it was on both gyros. It was on the ICM 2602, and that also had an MPU 6000 that also had electrical issues, but it was worse if you select the ICM 2602 versus the MPU 6000. It seemed like the MPU 6000 was just a little bit more tolerant to electrical you know, issues that that thing had. The other takeaway that I have is don't discount the ICM 2689. Some flight controllers have that. iFlight was using it for a while. There's this thing on the street that, no, oh, it's bad, for, you know, get away from it. The shock resistance, the documented shock resistance of it's not as high as the ICM 2602. However, you can see it performs pretty well. I've not had any issues with them so far. You know, I have heard people say that the failure rate's higher, but I feel like that's anecdotal. I've never seen like evidence of that in a paper documentation or getting statistical data back or anything like that. So, hey, I'm not saying they're wrong, but based on what I can see and you can see right here, that that gyro is doing pretty good. Again, as far as I'm aware, I believe it is ultimately TDK's intent that the 
ICM 2689 is the replacement for the MTU 6000, but if somebody else knows different, go ahead and please drop that in the comments below. As always, thanks for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed this content. What I'm gonna do for my Patreon video coming up this week is I'm gonna flip the boards around and take, do a little analysis of that. So if you're interested in that, go ahead and check out the Patreon sign up. Thanks everybody. Hope everybody has a great 2021 coming up. Until the next one, I hope this helps.